Good afternoon on what is a cool, bright and sunny day. It is Friday the 16th of September and I'm in the reading nook with a nice hot cup of tea. And some parcels to unbox. Uh, so I'm going to continue. Move these out of the way. Uh, delving into this one. Uh, now, I have already pulled out um, that, which is the Strontium Dog role playing game for uh, Jeff Dredd and the Royals of 2000 AD, uh, and Publishing, and also the Rogue Trooper uh, role playing game for it, and the core rules for it as well. And these are all very fine games. I've already done an unboxing of them. I've already done a, re a review of some of them. But what I've got down here in um, the bottom is this bundle. So, so far I have done, I've done unboxings of um, these supplements. Uh, so that's um, tr on the Trail of the Gods, the Fate of the Anganikia, um, at uh, Nocturne in the City of Lights, uh, City at the Centre of the Earth, and Thunders of Venus. They're all scenarios for Space 1889. Now, Space 1889 is uh, a role-playing game which originally came out in 1989, published by Game Designers Workshop. Um, and it was uh, really the kind of the first steampunk role-playing game because it cast uh, the Victorian, um, basically the, the new Victorian age, uh, in which uh, Thomas Edison uh, invented the ether, e ether screw, ether propeller, and was able to visit Mar Mars and the Moon and return and discovered on Mars cities connected by ca canals and uh, um, and then on Venus. Um, a hothouse jungle full of lizard men and dinosaurs. So, kind of classic um, late 19th century science fiction, uh, driven by, uh, you know, an, the urge to colonise um, and explore. So, yes, it does have sort of like a very imperial feel to it. Uh, and these days, that is a difficult subject to deal with. Now that was the original, published in 1989, supported by, or published by Game Designers Workshop. It came back um, within the uh, 21st century from Clock, Clockwork Publishing, uh, with a serial with a core book using the ubiquity system, and uh, a number of supplements. And it shifted the focus away from the British Empire and to a more European outlook, with a focus on the Prussian Empire. And that made it much more interesting uh, and you know, historically, um, and then there's a third edition coming out which will expand that further and perhaps have a more uh, wider world of view look upon the setting. So, uh, this is the Ether Calculator, uh, a scenario for it, uh, and it promises everything Jules Verne would have written, everything H.G. Wells should have written, everything Arthur Conan Doyle uh, thought of but never published because it was too fantastic. Uh, the Ether Calculator um, analytical engines are of special importance for the uh, calculation of complex processes, especially in Ether travel. Uh, the, the, uh, the characters are invited to visit the Silesian, Silesian analytical engine production facilities in uh, Brocklaw, uh, where they are introduced to the innovative anal analytical engine uh, Ordination um, Fabricate OF2001. Can you see where this is going? Um, especially designed for operations in the ether. For this purpose, the hosts are planning to test old threats, as they fondly call the machine, on board the e ether zeppelin von Neumann. Okay, um, you can definitely see where this is going. Where the analytical engine is supposed to break a calculating speed record and make the headlines of the worlds and newspapers. Uh, what starts out as a simple publicity event suddenly leads the adventures right into the middle of a criminal investigation and then on to an action loaded maiden voyage with a demanding tasks for all types of player characters. It requires skills in social interaction, a sharp mind, quick reflexes, but also accurate marksmanship. The appendix includes an elaborate article on analytical engines in the alternate universe of Space 1889 and provides optional rules for using these unique artifacts in the game. So, let's have a look inside. Um, so. Okay. All very grayscale. It's the, the, the original rule book is, is in colour. Uh, these are not essentially. So we've got a forward, an overview, uh, an invitation, 
so there's the invitation. They've got a list of, of the character recommendations for the types that should be used with this, this scenario. And then we get into the first part, it's called a calculated assassination. Um, at, uh, and essentially uh, here we meet the hosts, um, various German characters. So can you tell how the focus has shifted away from uh, essentially London and the United Kingdom uh, to, um, and the Empire? But, uh, so here we have um, the SAR facilities, nice little map there. Um, to, and um, we have the assassination attempt, uh, including the Kate encountering a mechanical man. As there's sort of like a bit of a, a change from the original, which didn't quite go as far as having them very, very much. But this brings it front and centre. Um, and then um, we have a list of the suspects, an explanation of what actually happened. Um, and then essentially the, this is the this is the murder mystery case. The also I say or the attempted murder mystery case. Um, to get the player characters involved um, and then they the yeah, opportunity role playing and such and the clues quite a few I mean the thing is um, here what's interesting is um, you've got an explanation of what happens and then you have uh, different um, NPCs uh, like um, Wilhelm Tor um, at, uh, um, and then um, to Stephen Craft and so on, um, Diaraboon, who is the uh, is a Martian. Uh, um, so you've got three characters there, and the uh, game master has the choice of choosing which one to be the perpetrator. So there's notes on on using those in the, using each of the characters in that format as well. Or alternatively, what you could do is go right. You have these three suspects. Um, one of them is that it, it, whichever one you decide essentially through role play and clues is the perpetrator rather than deciding ahead of time. So that's 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 an option. Okay. Something's blowing away. Um, at, uh, so um, and then um, you've got more development, um, at, uh, and then we've got a solution at the end, solving the problem before we go on to the maiden voyage. Uh, so uh, we've got to launch the Zeppelin, um, and when you get launched, you essentially there's a um, you get the, the main thing is the attack of the ether bugs. You've got um, dangers to uh, encounter out in the ether, including a bug hunt. Um, and here you can see a German soldier loyally fighting off the, the ether bugs. Um, and um, at, uh, so uh, that's a big feature um, of, of the encounter um, as the Zeppelin makes this speed run. Um, and here we have, uh, uh, you know, deck plan, decent little deck plans of the uh, von Neumann uh, Zeppelin. Um, and then unfortunately, things go awry and you have the von Neumann in flames. Um, with atmospheric um, re-entry uh, and an emergency landing. We've got an image there of um, the Zephyr itself going down. And that, you know, it's uh, sort of prefiguring the eventual events with um, uh, airships that would happen in the 30s. Um, so, yeah. Um, and um, so that's quite exciting. And the appendix, you, I do appreciate the appendix. This is an improvement over other... Um, as far as in in the series, you already have an appendix with handouts, um, floor plans, and deck plans, and uh, code tables um, for working out clues and someone to what's going on. Punch cards, of course, and a, an essay on analytical engines in the space of 1889. Um, I mean, they're, they're integral to a kind of. Um, uh, to the setting anyway, plus this genre of steampunk, and we've got analytical engines, inventions and rules um, in there as well. So you can so you can have uh, player characters getting involved in their creation and building and designing and users using and so on. So yeah, that's the Ether Calculator, uh, an adventure for Space Agent 89, uh, published by Clockwork Publishing, um, using the Ubiquity system. 
Well, I hope you have enjoyed this unboxing in the Nook. If you have, please click on the like button down below. And of course, if you've got any comments or feedback, I appreciate you taking the time to post those. Uh, and uh, lastly, if you want to be alerted to yet more unboxings in the Nook, where you'll see me out here um, with a box um, containing um, from which you know, from which I will unbox uh, a book or a game and chat about best things to my knowledge. All of course accompanied by a nice hot cup of tea. Then please do hit the subscribe button down below. In the meantime, thanks again for watching another unboxing in the Nook. We'll be back again soon with another one. Bye for now.